Hello, everybody, and welcome to Season 5 of From the Rafters of Rupp. The great thing about the tradition that is Kentucky basketball, you don't necessarily have to have your jersey retired to be remembered as a legendary member of the Kentucky basketball program. With that in mind, this season I'll be interviewing five former players who are prime candidates to have their jerseys retired to the rafters in the near future. So sit back and enjoy the next 30 minutes of From the Rafters of Rupp, Kentucky Basketball Legends. For our first episode of the season, I spoke with Rex Chapman, the celebrated boy wonder and talent extraordinaire excelled at the high school level as Kentucky's Mr. Basketball and was named a consensus All-American at the collegiate level and achieved tremendous success over his lengthy 12-year NBA career. We begin our conversation discussing who he recalls influenced his early interest in the game of basketball. It, my dad, you know, uh, growing up, he was a high school coach uh, from my earliest age uh, that I can remember, four or five years old. And um, I would go over to his practices after school, preschool, kindergarten, all through grade school, and start my homework. And then by the end of <laughs> his practice, uh, you know, I was out there on the floor dribbling around, being told, don't, don't let that ball bounce, all those things I'm sure you heard. Um, but that, that's where, you know, I, I got into the game and then I just loved it. I played every sport, but um, just loved basketball. Rex grew up in Owensboro, Kentucky, where his dad, Wayne Chapman, was the coach at Apollo High School. Wayne later served as the head coach at Kentucky Wesleyan, where he won the Division II National Championships in both 1987 and 1990. Rex established himself as a solid performer for his grade school and middle school teams. Yet once he entered Apollo High School, the dedication necessary to be the best player he could be blossomed. Freshman year, uh, two of my best buddies to this day, Greg Vaughn and Jeff Sanford, they started as freshmen on our varsity team. And I was small, 5'7", uh, 5'8", five, five, as a freshman, and you know, really a two guard. Um, but they started every game. And I think that really kind of made me hungry. Uh, you know, I saw guys my age, my grade, who were, you know, they were bigger and stronger, yeah, but, you know, as a kid, you don't really realize that at the time. And then, just as luck would have it, I grew about six, seven inches over that summer. Rex developed into one of the nation's best prep players and was named an All-American at the 1983 AAU National Tournament, where his Owensboro team finished third. In 1985, as a high school junior, Rex averaged 27.4 points per game and led Apollo to the Kentucky Sweet 16 State Tournament in Rupp Arena. Yeah, so you start getting those letters and my dad was always really good about saying, hey, listen, they like you for what they think you can be, what they think you can become. And you know, there were probably times I wish my dad would have said, you know, been more like, hey, good job, and <laughs> you're coming along. But it was always, you know, look, y you've done nothing, and you need to continue to work. And then by the time you get to college, maybe you'll be ready to play a little bit. So I was always humbled by him, and I, and I do think that, that it probably propelled me and fueled me um, to want to be as good as I could be. Identified as King Rex for his dominating play on the floor, Rex packed gymnasiums all across the Commonwealth. Every major college program in the country had a scholarship offer on the table for Rex. He narrowed his college choices to five schools. Rex visited North Carolina, North Carolina State, and Georgia Tech, but left his final two visits for the two in-state schools that were his highest on the list. I grew up sort of a more of a Louisville fan. You know, we were closer to Louisville. Um, you know, I wasn't a kid that, I never saw a game at Rupp Arena until they recruited me. I never saw a Louisville game at, at Freedom Hall until they recruited me. So it wasn't like I you know, were, was going to these games. I just watched them on TV. But then I had ties to UK because my grandmother lived here. And um, you know, once they started recruiting me, that is, I started liking the school a bit more each day. In the spring of 1986, Rex was named Kentucky's Mr. Basketball, the Kentucky Gatorade Player of the Year, and a McDonald's All-American. Every basketball fan in the Commonwealth waited for the announcement, where would King Rex sign to play his college basketball? 
it, it came down to Louisville and Kentucky. I visited Louisville and it was terrific. You know, the only guy they lost from the team that I would have gone into was Milt Wagner from their championship team. They had everybody back um, and I would have probably jumped right in there uh, to that spot. And I'm, that's what I'm thinking anyway. And then I came here and, you know, the guys here were Ed Davender and Kenny Walker and Winston Bennett, James Blackman, McDonald's All-Americans, Loaded, Richard Madison, Cedric Jenkins. And at the time, in the early 80s, everything that shouldn't have mattered to a 17-year-old, it sort of did. This seemed like a bigger place that was more prestigious. And that, again, that's a very uh, superficial sort of view, uh, but that's what it seemed like to me. And it, it seemed more important here. The game itself seemed more important here than it did anywhere else that I went, Carolina. And for good or bad, I think that may be the case. You know, we, it, we take it very seriously here. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Rex Chapman after these words from our sponsors. It's pizza that's made to order, the way we like, and their wings and their wing bites taste great. Hey, save me some. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's great. Practice your shot in our indoor, temperature-controlled shooting range or work with one of our experts to choose the right firearm for your next outdoor experience. Bud's Gun Shop and Range. Find it here. Rex Chapman's decision to attend the University of Kentucky thrilled the Big Blue Nation, and he quickly emerged as an immediate fan favorite. For Rex, though, he knew the initial adjustment to the college game would present its own set of new challenges. When I stepped foot on campus the first time, I weighed 160 pounds, and I'm just hoping they don't redshirt me. And, you know, got in here with Reggie Hansen, was my roommate, and we, neither of us, both of us, we really were uh, young, immature, physically and mentally. And um, we kind of leaned on one another, but it was really tough. During the 1985-86 season, first year Kentucky coach Eddie Sutton led the Wildcats to a 30-4 and record and a final eight appearance in the NCAA tournament. With the services of UK All-American Kenny Walker lost to graduation from that team, the 86-87 Cats were relying on all-SEC performer Winston Bennett to fill the role on the inside as a primary scorer and rebounder. We lost Winston Bennett in the first practice of that season to an ACL. He redshirted that year, so that sort of, I think, opened the door for Eddie to think about starting three guards. Because I, I I couldn't have beaten out Ed or James at that time uh, physically. They were just, and defensively, they were so much better than I was. So we, I, I think we probably, had Winston not got hurt, I probably would have come off the bench. In his first official game as a Wildcat, Rex pumped in 18 points on 7-11 shooting from the field as Kentucky defeated Austin P 71-69 in Rupp Arena. The highlight of the first half of his freshman year, though, was playing the Louisville Cardinals at Freedom Hall. I didn't go there, and then we beat them mercilessly uh, my freshman year in Louisville. And it was obviously so exciting, and we're, we you know, beat our rival um, on their home floor. They were defending champs, and they were supposed to destroy us, I, I believe. We were heavy underdogs in the game and we just kind of bombarded them and it snowballed and <laughs> and whatever but i just remember also feeling so bad for coach crumb over there kentucky defeated louisville 85 51. rex nailed five of eight three-pointers and led kentucky to a blowout win scoring 26 points on the night even with that early success rex was still just a freshman and throughout the roller coaster ride of his first college basketball season Rex continued to self-evaluate and strive to improve his overall game. I just remember going, you know, this is, you just, I couldn't turn it on and turn it off like you could in high school. I had to get used to playing hard every minute of every game. Uh, and, you know, cause you never want to come out. So I had to either get in better shape or start taking myself out and I opted to get in better shape. 
The Cats' inconsistent play resulted in an 18-10 overall record. UK's strength of schedule, however, did pay dividends. With wins over ranked opponents Auburn, Navy, and Oklahoma, Kentucky was able to squeeze its way into the NCAA tournament field as an eight seed. The Cats' first round opponent would be Ohio State at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. I, I remember that it was a, one of those games where we never had a chance. They jumped out and it seemed like we played from a, an 11 point deficit from beginning to end. And I don't know if that's right, but I also know they had two really good players. Uh, Jay Burson, you know, six feet, 160 soaking wet, uh, but he was fantastic. And then they had a guy who ended up being a lottery pick, Dennis Hobson. The Cats lost to the Buckeyes 91-77 and finished the season out of the top 20. Rex led the team in scoring his freshman year, posting a 16 point per game average, and was the only Wildcat named to the all SEC squad's first team. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Rex Chapman after these words from our sponsors. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. Fueling Kentucky, fueling America, fueling growth, friends of coal. Between his freshman and sophomore year, Rex was selected to participate in the prestigious Pan American Games held in Indianapolis, Indiana. Representing Team USA, Rex averaged 14 points per game. He trailed only Danny Manning and David Robinson, both All-Americans, as the team's leading scorer. Benefiting from a successful summer experience and coupled with the return of Winston Bennett from his previous season's injury, Kentucky jumped out the gates quickly to start the 87-88 season, winning its first 11 games. We were rolling, and, uh, and I want to say that um, it was sort of who's the best team for most of that that season it was is it Arizona with Steve Kerr and Sean Elliott and the, or is it us and they got beat one evening and the next day we became number one so now we're number one and our first game out I think was against Auburn at home and I'll, I'll never forget what happened um, you know, it was one of those, it was a scrambling last possession kind of thing. And and I they throw it back to a guy, John Kaler, who he made a three. He was a four man who didn't shoot threes. And he raises up and as Richard is closing out, kind of Richard fell, slipped and fell down. And so I scramble to get there and just get, you know, something, anything up. And it was too late and he makes the shot and we get beat the first time out at home. Uh, after being ranked number one, and uh, it, was, it was awful. The Cats finished the regular season 20 and four, ranked sixth in the country. Kentucky defeated Ole Miss and LSU in the SEC tournament before beating Georgia 62-57 to capture the 1988 SEC tournament championship. Kentucky then advanced in the NCAA tournament with wins over Southern and Maryland before facing Villanova in the round of 16 in Birmingham, Alabama. We were up eight or 10 at halftime. But Winston had three fouls and we came out and we were in some press or trap or something, first play of the second half. And Winston went out to trap and for sure fouled the guy, 48 feet from the basket. And he had to come out and we ended, and really right then we just started, it started unraveling. And um, the next thing I knew, for real, the next thing I remember from that game is sitting in the locker room after the game and Ralph Hacker asking me if I'm going to stay in school or leave school. When Rex's sophomore campaign came to a close, he had once again led the Cats in scoring, averaging just over 19 points per game. He was named a unanimous All-American and for the second year in a row was selected as a first team member to the All-SEC squad. As the season ended, a number of questions surrounded the Wildcat team. Investigations into Eric Manuel's test scores and the infamous Emory package addressed to Chris Mills indicated there were challenging times on the horizon for the Kentucky program. At this point, I'd been kind of led to believe, and I don't know by whom, but um, probably my father who had spoken with someone who says, look, they're going to go on probation. It's whether it's now or a year from now, that's going to happen. And 
my mindset was um, I, I had played two years at Kentucky and Eric Manuel was the only other guy that he, he played and started a lot. He was a great player and a great kid, but Eric was gonna be ineligible. And we knew Eric was not gonna be able to play. So I was gonna be the only returning player with any experience whatsoever. And I'm looking at coming back and, and just, I didn't know, but there was just so much uncertainty. The national media carried daily news stories of different outcome scenarios for the UK program and rumors persisted of possible conflicts between Kentucky players and Kentucky coaches. Eddie wasn't perfect, but I certainly wasn't. And I was hard-headed, I was stubborn. I think that, um, you know, looking back, I think the fact that, you know, I knew that I had so many people who loved me and all that, it gave me a false sense of who I was. And, um, you know, not that I ever, was disrespectful in that way, but I think that, you know, in a sense, it, it goes to your head. As Rex looks back on those strenuous times around the UK program, he's now able to appreciate the guidance and direction he received from Eddie Sutton and the Kentucky coaching staff. Eddie was a great coach, and had I, had I not had, I say this often, had I not had two years of tutelage uh, in his system, I wouldn't have lasted my first contract in the NBA because, uh, or passed it, just because I learned so much from him. And I also learned later on that, guess what? I did take a lot of bad shots. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Rex Chapman after these words from our sponsors. Fresh, tasty, savory, double dogs. In a single word, delicious. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. Following his sophomore season at Kentucky, Rex entered his name into the 1988 NBA draft. He was selected with the eighth overall pick in the first round by the expansion franchise Charlotte Hornets. The first guard off was Mitch Richmond at five. Next was Hersey Hawkins, sixth to, to Philadelphia, which is where I wanted to go. And then also the last team that I'd visited was the, the Suns, and they had the seventh pick, and they took Tim Perry. And so now I'm sitting there, and you know, I, I, David Falk had come over and said, you'll go no lower than eight. Charlotte will take you. And at that point, you still don't know. <laughs> but they said they, you know, they took me, and I went, and. Uh, yeah, went to a team that had one other player who was just taken in the expansion draft, Del Curry. Rex spent four seasons with the Hornets, four years in Washington with the Bullets, one year with the Miami Heat, and four seasons with the Phoenix Suns. He averaged 14.6 points per game during his NBA career and scored nearly 10,000 points. I asked Rex, what was his favorite stop along the way? You know, Miami was great. For a, for a year, um, uh, but you know, I, I enjoyed all the stops. Uh, Phoenix, you know, ended up being a place that uh, myself and my ex-wife uh, raised our kids for 20 years, um, and it was just fantastic. The physical stress of an NBA career resulted in seven separate surgeries for Rex. He convinced himself that he needed prescribed pain medications to conduct his daily life. His continued reliance on opioid drugs progressed into an outright addiction. After several years of on-again, off-again treatment, Rex finally found the help he needed. Went through uh, rehab in, in, at Paul Andrews' facility in Louisville. Um, Paul and my sister got me into rehab right away. So almost three years now, no opiates, uh, very thankful and grateful and, um, you know, could not have done it without you know, my family and, and really good friends. Rex is now an outspoken advocate of opioid addiction awareness. He's committed to helping those who are facing the same struggles and pain he once lived through. The people who are abusing opiates, for the most part, in this country are people who are, yes, it's been given to them for physical pain, but they're numbing themselves down, many of them self-medicating, because opiates in my mind are, they're sort of the, 
it'll be all right drug because you take it and anything bad that's coming your way, you get that bill in the mail or you get that phone call from whoever it is, you just sort of have a mindset, it'll be all right. And if A, it's not going to be all right, but B, that's, that's how you think. And then before you know it, you've got a lot of things coming back at you that aren't going to be all right. They've, opiates lull you into a false sense of, of who you are and really numb you, numb you to a, to a point where your decisions and uh, every, things that you've believed your whole life go by the wayside. Throughout our conversation, it was very evident that Rex has a great appreciation for the continuous support he receives from family, friends, and the Big Blue Nation. He also acknowledges the open acceptance by his teammates while at the University of Kentucky and how that's had a lasting impression on his life. I remember having an overwhelm both of the seasons that I spent here, an overwhelming sort of gratitude to all of those guys that I played with because I had sort of an, uh, a schoolboy sort of uh, status coming here and from Paul Andrews to Cedric Jenkins, Winston Bennett, Ed Davender, Rob Locke, Irv Thomas, I don't want to forget anybody, James Blackman, those guys took me under their wing and loved me um, when, you know, I, I don't know that everybody would have. Rex Chapman has gone from Kentucky schoolboy legend to Big Blue superstardom onto a remarkable NBA career while the Big Blue Nation has followed his every success. At Kentucky, Rex was all SEC in both his freshman and sophomore seasons. He was named SEC tournament MVP and an All-American performer following his sophomore year. In only two seasons at UK, Rex permanently stamped his name in Kentucky's distinguished 1,000-point club. In 2011, Rex was inducted into the State of Kentucky Athletic Hall of Fame, and in 2013 was voted into the University of Kentucky Athletics Hall of Fame. Devotedly known to the Kentucky faithful as King Rex, number three Rex Chapman will forever be remembered as one of the all-time greatest players to ever wear the blue and white. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, when we hear more tales from the Rafters of Rupp. From the Rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Double Dogs, Friends of Coal, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.